this week through the 28th. And I remember it, it was threesome. We was all drunk. You are, you are definitely a lie. How are you so sure you wore the condom? Judge, I woke up with it on. <laughs> oh! There was zero probability of paternity. <gasps> zero. I get told by my son that she said she lied and that she swapped one of her other kids on purpose so that he wouldn't be the father. Wait a minute! <laughs> My sugar daddy been there for 10 years, have never, ever left my side. He come way before this. Oh. He might want some pictures. <laughs> but, but, um... Oh! Judge Lake greets everyone with her usual flair and introduces the spicy case of Cooper vs. Canterbury. Just wait until you hear what happens next. It's going to be a roller coaster. Hello, Your Honor. Hello. This is the case of Cooper vs. Canterbury. Thank you, Jerome. Good day, everyone. Mr. Cooper, you admit to a brief sexual fling with the defendant, but state there is no way you fathered her two-year-old son, Jaden. You opened your case because you claim Ms. Canterbury threatened to put you on child support, and you want to prove you're not the father before she can do that. Can you believe this drama? Mr. Cooper casually admits to a brief fling with Ms. Canterbury, but adamantly denies fathering her son, Jaden. He's determined to avoid those pesky child support obligations. The drama is just beginning, and it's already so juicy. Wait, he just got dropped off. Right. <laughs> My point exactly. That's how quick she fell in love with the baby. She told she Miss Canterbury to leave the baby there with her. She knew from the start that he was Jaden's. Jaden looked how like... How old was Jaden when you left the baby with his mom? He was probably that, like a month old. Man. Right. Exactly. A month old. Exactly. But now he's two years old. Almost About three. To be three. Almost three, yep. What a moment. Mr. Cooper presents a calendar to explain the timeline of their sexual encounters, claiming he wore a condom every time. The details are getting even juicier, and you won't believe what's next. You see right here? Yeah. In the week of September, this is the first time we had sex. I wore a condom. Nope. Second time we had sex was this week through the 28th. And I remember it, it was threesome. We was all drunk. You are, you are definitely a lie. How are you so sure you wore the condom? Judge, I woke up with it on. <laughs> oh! What a twist. Judge Lake performs a calculation using Jaden's birth date to determine the window of conception, aligning perfectly with Ms. Canterbury's timeline. The suspense keeps building and it's electrifying. My point exactly. All right, you may step back to the plaintiff's podium and let me do my own calculation. <laughs> let me get the um, conception calculator here and let's go to work. So let's start with when was Jaden born? May 27, 2016. May 27? Can you believe this drama? Judge Lake highlights the inconsistency in Mr. Cooper's calendar and reiterates the calculated conception window, further challenging his shaky claims. The tension is at its peak and you won't believe what's next. Date in, got it. If we hit calculate, the conception window would have been between September 2nd and September 6th and the most probable time of sex would be between August 30th and September 6th. Judge, so, I told you. so let's go and back to your you calendar, Mr. Mr. Cooper. What a revelation. Mr. Cooper sticks to his story, maintaining he wore a condom during their encounters, while Ms. Canterbury insists otherwise. The drama intensifies, and the stakes couldn't be higher. You wore a condom. I sure did the first two times. Nope. Not the third we time. Didn't not have, in October. We didn't have I did. I'm not gonna lie. I had, a few, I had a few drinks. You got caught slipping. Oh, more than I, a few. I, I was more than slipping. I was falling. I don't know what to say, Judge. So you're saying that in your calculation, you were not having sex with Ms. Canterbury during the window of conception. Right. This is wild. Mr. Cooper insists he wasn't even in town during the likely conception period, leading to a fiery exchange with Ms. Canterbury. The stakes are even higher now, and the tension is through the roof. Now, I'm gonna say this one time. Can I say something, Judge, please? You, but August was not on your exhibit, Mr. Cooper, so... Right. Because he don't know what he's talking about. I, he just looks dumb. He don't know I, what he's talking I, about. I do know what I'm talking about. You don't. And why could it not be August, Mr. Cooper? Jaden was made in August. I ain't touched back down to Toledo to September. What a twist. Ms. Canterbury reveals her current boyfriend, Casey, has been acting as Jaden's father since he was one, providing financial and emotional support. This story has more twists and turns than a soap opera. Who's been Jaden's father? My figure? boyfriend, Casey. So your boyfriend has had to step up and be a father figure to Jaden. Yes, he's. we've been together before Jaden was one years old. He's been here, he's taken care of him financially, he's been here, taught him things. He's been the only father figure in his life. Can you believe this? Mr. Cooper emphasizes his commitment to his family's attachment to Jaden and his desire to clarify paternity to avoid disappointing his mother. The tension keeps escalating, and the stakes are getting higher. I just said that, right? So you think I'm gonna disappoint my mama even though I feel that doubt? I'm not about to have my mama look at me because she ain't raised that type of man. Whether I do or I don't know, that's why we're here to find out today which I need to find out. Because you say your mother has just decided it's our baby. Yeah, my mama put the role on me. Look at that. Y'all see that? 
They look just alike. Look yeah, at that nose. See. No. I'm pretty sure you see looks are deceiving every day in this court, Judge. <laughs> they are deceiving. Don't let nothing fool you. This is unbelievable. Mr. Cooper hopes to prove he is not the father, fearing the emotional impact on his family if the results confirm otherwise. The suspense is at its peak, and the next part will blow your mind. What are you hoping for today? Your Honor, I came here to prove that I wasn't the father. That you were not. Yes. I'm not. But then as I sit here and say that, if that cuss come back that I'm not that father, that's going to break their hearts at home because they got so attached to him. I just hope that, you know, the test results prove that he's the father. What a revelation. Mr. Cooper accepts the results and pledges to take responsibility, promising to support Jaden and communicate directly with Ms. Canterbury. The story reaches its resolution, but it's not over yet. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Cooper, you are the father. Like I said, like I said. Yeah. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. The session starts with introducing the case of Montoya, Sensabaugh versus Brown. And let me tell you, it's going to be a roller coaster. Ms. Montoya and her son, Mr. Sensabaugh, are convinced they've been duped by Ms. Brown about the paternity of her child. Judge Lake notes that a recent brush with death has made the DNA results today even more critical. You think that's crazy? Just wait. You may be seated. Hello, Your Honor. Hello. This is a case of Montoya, Sensabaugh versus Brown. Thank you, Jerome. Good day, everyone. Ms. Montoya, you and your son, Mr. Sensabaugh, claim you've been lied to by the defendant about the paternity of her child on numerous occasions. Yes, Your Honor. Can you believe the drama here? Ms. Brown gives us the lowdown on how her relationship with Mr. Sensabaugh hit the skids, blaming his mama's boy tendencies. She even had an apartment ready, but he ghosted her on lease signing day, leaving her to pack her bags for Oklahoma. Talk about a plot twist, and guess what happens next? You say you were in a relationship. How did did it end? I didn't know that Gregory was such a mother's boy and that I was be dealing with how, his how mother. How am I a mother's boy? I would be dealing with his mother. I didn't lay with her, I laid with him. It ended when we were supposed to, we had a conversation and he had said that he was ready to man up and move in together. So I had found an apartment. I had an apartment that was ready for us to sign the paperwork. Oh boy, here we go. Judge Lake digs into the timing of Ms. Brown's activities with her ex right after being with Mr. Sensabaugh. Ms. Brown sheepishly admits it was pretty soon after, confirming our suspicions. You won't believe what she says next. And how soon after you were intimate with Mr. Sensabaugh did you go down to see your ex. It was soon. Yes. Is that evidence you have for me? Jerome, will you pass that? This is the calendar of the times that I was you slept with both of them. Outlined the dates you were intimate with both men on a calendar. Green are the days you were intimate with Mr. Sensabaugh. Yes, ma'am. Now this is getting juicy. Judge Lake looks over a calendar Ms. Brown brought in, showing when she was intimate with both men, color-coded and all. The calendar proves there's a lot of gray areas here about who's the dad, and the plot thickens even more. I guess experience and morning sickness. Now here we go, you drove. Greg Newton. You told me. Never I, I don't know what you told never Greg or what. I, I never told you that I took a plane to Oklahoma. Did. But never. did you tell her yes, when you, you got did. off the plane? No. But when did you tell me you started throwing I didn't that? talk to you until after, until like a little bit after eight months when I told him that he may be the father. The tension is off the charts. Ms. Montoya and Mr. Sensabaugh vent their frustrations over Ms. Brown's lies, with Ms. Montoya bringing up her son's near-death experiences to stress the importance of the truth. The family's pain is clear, and just when you thought it was over, it's not. That's Be not with him either. and something happening to my child. That's I not love true all either. my children equally and dearly. True and it would have just regardless been not of right to... Like I explained to you, regardless of his life, I would have been the primary responsible person. And you ain't had the You're best lifestyle You're not the primary responsible person when we were sleeping together, so how can I word for that. That was an emotional roller coaster. Ms. Montoya gets teary-eyed, talking about the potential grandchild she might be missing out on, sharing stories of her own past trauma. She mentions her 91-year-old grandmother, who might have a new great-great-grandchild. The stakes are sky high, and the drama keeps coming. Your son told you there could be a baby. No, no, no. Honestly, I, when I saw the baby, I called to check on the baby in her. I'm, I'm not, she can call me as she may, but I still I never care. said I'm anything about person. you, and I still don't think nothing about you, because I, I can don't see the... know you as a person. She actually getting a emotional talking about checking on you and your child. What a revelation. The court gets the DNA test results, showing zero probability of Mr. Sensabaugh being the dad. Ms. Brown's initial certainty just crumbles, and the audience is left gasping. But the surprises aren't over yet. I got an email in the middle of the night. And what did the results say? That there was zero probability of paternity. Zero. Zero. But then, what happens on week 14? Week 14, I get told by my son that she said she lied, and that she swapped one of her other kids on purpose so that he wouldn't be the father. Wait a minute! 
The drama is at its peak. Ms. Montoya shares the emotional toll of the situation, especially with her son's risky lifestyle and near-death experiences. She emphasizes the need for truth for her 91-year-old grandmother, who deserves to know if she has a great-great-grandchild. The family's need for closure is palpable, and you won't believe what's next. This is my son. I can lose him at any given time. He's been shot twice. Who's to say the third time isn't gonna be it? My it's son almost died when he was two weeks old. So if she wants to consider him a mama's boy, that's fine. With him getting shot, it, it just, it brings just different emotion to me. And, and I have a 91-year-old grandmother that's still an able body. And if this is her great, great grandchild, she wants to be a part of her life as well. That was heart-stopping. Judge Lake reads the final DNA results. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Sensabaugh, you are not her father. Yes. The case of Lee Vera's Green is introduced, with Miss Lee aiming to prove Mr. Green fathered her three-year-old son, Kingston. Miss Lee states Mr. Green denied the child from the beginning of her pregnancy. She hopes today's proceedings will end his denial. Hold on tight, because this is just the beginning of the roller coaster. Hello, Your Honor. Hello. This is a case of Lee versus Green. Thank you, Jerome. Good day, everyone. Miss Lee, you have come to court today with one goal in mind, to prove to Mr. Green that he fathered your three-year-old son, Kingston. Mr. Green has denied your son from the moment you got pregnant, but to his denial will end. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Get your popcorn ready. Miss Lee recounts her struggles to get Mr. Green involved in Kingston's life, stating he never came around as he should. Mr. Green admits to trying to meet Miss Lee halfway, but she always gave excuses. He claims Miss Lee knew he had a girlfriend and attempted to break them up. Seriously, this is better than a soap opera. But at the end of the day, I just want him to step up. And Kingston and is three years old. Kingston's three. He just turned three June 3rd. So this And he didn't do nothing for his birthday. He I tried to meet her when? halfway, but her attitude is just... My you know, attitude has nothing to do with you stepping up. up for your child. It's messed up. She, she always give me some runaround skews after excuse, but you know what I mean? It don't make sense. You know, I tried to meet her halfway as far as, you know, taking the DNA test and things like that, but talking, it was back and forth. We was never in no stair relationship. She knew I had a girlfriend oh. already. This is juicy. Miss Lee describes an incident where she called Mr. Green's girlfriend from his phone to reveal she was pregnant. She details how she made him talk to his girlfriend while she was on the phone. This incident highlights the conflict and tension in their relationship. Wait till you see what happens next. Oh, he could, and I called him. She did. Oh! From his phone. Yeah, I snuck, called the girl, woke him out of his sleep, and made him start talking, and didn't let him know that she was on the phone until the end of the conversation. Yeah, your dude over here, and I'm pregnant, you know. Whoa! That's what it is. In your mind, you knew you weren't really in a relationship with him, but you thought he was trying to play both sides. Told me she was back and forth between some other dudes. She didn't know if he was or mine at first. Okay, so, wait, 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 wait. I okay. slept with another dude. Yes, I did. I slept with another dude once time with a condom. Things are heating up. Mr. Green presents Facebook posts by Miss Lee, which he claims show her promiscuity. Miss Lee dismisses the relevance of the posts, stating they were made after Kingston's birth. Mr. Green insists these posts prove his doubts about Kingston's paternity. Stay tuned, because it's about to get even crazier. That was recently. That oh. ain't, and that's not when King was born, 2015 now. Okay. And you submitted another question. Raise of hand. Who got the good D? I want to know who got it. <laughs> Come on now. I'm single. She, I'm she single. Was I don't I know it. who she with. Me and her were just friends with benefits. Mr. Green, when you see these posts, you say she's out with whoever got the good D. Yeah, basically. I was out with... Basically. I was... And you admit, you admittedly say, that's what I'm looking okay. for, that's what I hey, am. I don't sugarcoat nothing. This is unreal. Miss Lee reveals she has a sugar daddy who has supported her for 10 years but claims they never had sex. Mr. Green argues that the sugar daddy's support casts doubt on Kingston's paternity. Miss Lee insists her sugar daddy is not involved in Kingston's paternity. Eternity. Get ready because the plot thickens. So well, you do oh. have a sugar daddy. Yeah, I got me a good sugar daddy. My sugar daddy been there for 10 years, have never ever left my side. He come way before this. <laughs> he might want some pictures. <laughs> but, but, um. Pictures and something else is told. Sex and pictures are totally different. Yeah, I send pictures. This sugar daddy paid for the baby shower too. Baby he shower, did. he buys one. He, he does did. everything. Where were you? You ain't bought nothing. You should be surprised another dude to doing something. Oh man, the suspense. Mr. Green explains his numerous attempts to get a DNA test for Kingston, detailing several refusals by Miss Lee. Miss Lee counters by saying Mr. Green should have paid for half of the test. The judge criticizes both for not resolving the issue sooner. Don't go anywhere because the revelations keep coming. First of all, he was born on June 
June 3rd. I went to the hospital. I asked the hospital, you know, can we go ahead and get DNA testing done, whatever. So a few days later going by, she's telling me, oh, it's too soon for him to come outside. He was just born this and that. So, I refused because he was a day old. Here comes November. I'm still asking her, like, okay, cool. I want to see him. Let's go ahead and get the DNA results done, this and that. Oh, uh, I'm on my way out here in Douglasville. I don't have a ride. You got to come get me. I'm like, why don't I have, why you can't meet me halfway? So Let she me... refused in, Your Honor, too. This is getting intense. Mr. Green expresses his doubts about Kingston's paternity, citing Miss Lee's past statements and behaviors. Miss Lee argues that physical resemblance to Mr. Green's baby pictures proves paternity. The judge emphasizes that biology, not appearances, determines paternity. There's still more to uncover. I mean, because like I said, when he was first born, she was saying, she, she did admit that she slept with someone. Top of that, after he was born, she kept asking me, oh, let me see your baby pictures. Let me get your baby pictures. Trying to compare. And once she got the baby pictures, that's when she felt like she was 100%. Bingo. You know, Bingo. She was Don't they look like the same sure. baby? Look like the same baby. That's him that's, in the blue. But once so, she seen the picture, that's, that's when right she there. felt more confident. That's him. You can't that's just go him. off the picture. What a twist. The judge addresses the emotional impact of foster care on Miss Lee and her desire to ensure Kingston has a father. Miss Lee shares her pain of not having a father growing up and wants to prevent the same for her son. The judge commends Miss Lee's persistence. You won't believe the next part. The only and time she, I feel like she really hits me up there and then she'll be like, oh, I need I need a babysitter. What you doing? That's the only time I feel I like... I do. only time she called me up is more convenient for her to go to One work. One of the babysitters when I had, so when I told her, but, but what you're... you not what? a babysitter. You don't babysit your own... You I'm not a babysitter. That's why I'm not a babysitter. It's a different... I mean, it's not so far out of the ordinary for her to say, hey, mister, can you watch child while I go to work? Or even if she just needed a break, that she trusts you because you were so good to her other child. And the moment of truth. The judge reads the DNA test results. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Green, you are the father. Told you! I told you! Look at him! Judge Lake opens the court with all the authority of a TV judge and greets everyone like a boss. The case is introduced as Craig v. Craig Thompson. Sounds dramatic already, right? Jerome, ever the reliable assistant, gets a well-deserved thank you. Buckle up, this ride is about to get wild. You say that today is your last hope in discovering your true identity. Now you state that one question continually haunts you. Is the man you've been calling dad for most of your life really your biological father? What an emotional roller coaster we're on. Judge Lake shifts her focus to Miss Janelle Craig, Miss Craig's mother, who's got her own spicy tale to tell. Janelle confesses she had more partners than a rom-com protagonist back when Miss Craig was conceived. She's totally baffled why her daughter is still on this daddy hunt. Hold on to your seats because more revelations are coming. You admit to sleeping with more than one man at the time your daughter was conceived, yet you argue you don't understand why she's still looking for answers. Correct. Now, Mr. Thompson, you say you always assumed you were Miss Craig's father. Yes, Your Honor. Can you even wrap your head around this? Miss Craig narrates her first encounter with Mr. Thompson when she was around 10, a scene straight out of a soap opera. Turns out the man she thought was her father was just her mom's boyfriend. Plot twist. Janelle, ever the keeper of secrets, had everyone believing Mr. Thompson was the real dad. The plot is thicker than a bowl of oatmeal now. I've been going through too much, in and out of foster homes, back and forth. When I was about five, there was a man in my life. He was said to be my father, calling him daddy, daddy, and my auntie like, don't call him daddy anymore. This is getting harder to process by the second. Janelle recalls a tavern encounter where she casually informed Mr. Thompson they had a child together, like you do, right? Mr. Thompson's reaction, utter bewilderment and denial. He was like, kids, what kids? Meanwhile, Janelle's all, surprise, it's a 10 year old. Keep watching. This roller coaster isn't slowing down. That wasn't Mr. Thompson. No. When did he come into your life? I was getting out the foster home with my sister. We went to go stay with my mom and my aunt. Who's this man she thought was her father? That was the current boyfriend, and he knew he wasn't the father. Wow, the tension in here is thicker than Thanksgiving gravy. Mr. Thompson recalls seeing Chanel as a tiny baby at her grandmother's house post-prison stint. Seriously, this story has everything. He didn't believe she was his child, and now they're debating the finer details of who remembers what. You won't believe what happens next. I didn't come out right and say, hey, baby daddy. Oh, but, but that's what you I said, mean, so yeah. I thought that's what you wanted. I mean, I mean, just the parents. So you remember this day? No. <laughs> I remember seeing Chanel was a baby. She was one, but oh. I came out of prison. I came by her grandmama's house. Her mother wasn't there, oh. and I seen Chanel. Unbelievable, right? Mr. Thompson recounts returning to Chanel's life after getting a call from her aunt. Talk about a comeback. Chanel, understandably wary, brought a posse whenever she visited him, and the whole situation overwhelmed him. The drama only intensifies from here. When you got this call from her aunt that she needed you, you came back again. She wouldn't come with me alone. I just felt like that. I but wanted to spend I took time with her. With she didn't me. want to spend time with me. She wanted to bring other people 
people and I couldn't but deal you, with that. As a child, I didn't trust him to be with him. So every time I left with him, I would bring a cousin or my sister with me. That was heart-wrenching. Chanel opens up about her paternity confusion, which has hurt her deeply. She recalls taking a DNA test with a man from her past who wasn't her biological father. Talk about a disappointing reveal. This added layers of confusion and frustration to her already complicated life. And believe me, the story's only getting more tangled. What fantasy world are you living in? Because I don't see that. You came out of the foster care system and you were living with your aunt and your mother. You think Mr. Thompson is your father? Yes. Got back in touch with him. His girlfriend and her kids was telling me that he was saying that he didn't think I was his. What an emotional moment. Chanel lays the blame on her parents for not resolving the paternity issue sooner. Janelle admits to a bit of promiscuity at 16, which really muddies the waters here. Mr. Thompson's doubts stem from not seeing Janelle pregnant and another name on the birth certificate. The revelations are coming fast and furious now. Is you sure that's not your daddy? Because I could see some features in there, but this was already done. And you knew that this was not your biological father? Yes. I can only imagine how it felt for you. So at this time, you're just confused. <laughs> Are you asking your mother? I'm mad at both of them because they should have got it done when I was born and if they didn't get it done. I can't believe this is happening. Janelle explains her teenage fear led her to accept another man's offer to step up and be on the birth certificate. Mr. Thompson feels utterly betrayed by this revelation. Chanel's lifelong confusion and pain are all too apparent as she processes these arguments. Emotions are about to run even higher. Why is it you have doubt? If you're Chanel's father, you thought she was a virgin when you were... It came to me as in, like, this is your baby. You're but stupid. when you, you said that when you, you sound stupid. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on, Miss Craig. You immediately went over there to see this little baby. Yes. And you didn't think she was yours. So you thought it was plausible then. Correct. Can you believe how deep this goes? Chanel talks about breaking the cycle for her own child by ensuring paternity certainty from the start. Good on her. She desperately wants her parents to get along and support her. The courtroom's empathy and support are palpable. Get ready for the moment of truth. The first time I was 17, he said, well, wait till you turn 18. 18, you ain't got That's to pay no more really child matter support. To me. I want to take care of her. Why were you reluctant to take a DNA test privately? We never had time. You didn't want to step up and be a man and take care of responsibility. I've been taking care of her, dude. This changes everything. The DNA results reveal Mr. Thompson is. As it pertains to Ms. Chanel Craig, Ms. Craig, Mr. Thompson is not your father. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, Neil. You can give me a hug. I'm your mom and dad.